Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Sarah. This is Matt and Sarah's world. This is the blind griffin. I'm just going to turn this music down just a tiny bit because although it's very very nice it's deafening the heck out of me. Right now this game has been sat on my playlist for a while but I haven't gotten to it because I've been too busy playing vampire. Um, you may have noticed I haven't been playing Vampire on the channel. Um, I figured we all needed a break from it. Um, so I went off and played other games as you saw. And I'm just going to play it off the channel. Because there's too much left to play. And I think you're going to get. I think people are getting bored of it. And. I just want to play it casually whenever I feel like it rather than having to sit down every week and plow through yet another episode. I'm actually getting to the point now where I don't want to play it. Um, but yet again, I do because I want to find an ending. Now, uh, what I might do is I'll get a little bit further forward in it is record later on and maybe we can see where it ends we, we, we will see what happens um, but for now I'm gonna crack on with this now I can't remember what it's about I think it's a mystery of some kind and I think it's a reading mystery yes it's a reading mystery would you like an explanation of how to play the Brian Griffin I suppose I better had Vivian, hey there, if you're feeling confused on how to play, we'll help you out. Left click your mouse or press enter or the space button on your keyboard to read more text. Cool. Copacetic. Oh, I'm going to like her. When you see a blinking golden icon in the lower right corner, the text box, and that means you can continue on. Cool. Okay, so you can... Oh, yes. Cool. You can roll up and down on this one. And I can get text history boy. Pressing T. Fantastic. MLO. What, what are you doing over here? <laughs> I'm explaining to this person on the other side of the screen here how to play our game. I like it. MLO. Sounds annoying. Oh, don't be like that. Just go on and show off your expertise, won't you? I can't do this alone. Emma, guess I've got no choice. So if you right click with your mouse in the game, the in game menu will show up. Oh! Okay. And you'll also be able to save your game right, if you, right away if you want. Oh. Right click again to hide the menu. Okay, by the. By the by, the glossier is for when you see a 1920 slang word you don't know. These words will also look different, like the word bear cat. A hot headed, fiery girl, expert, experts cannot agree on whether an actual bear cat animal will be terrifying or adorable. Ha! Oh, I lie. Okay, guys. Maria, oh, are you two handling the tutorial? Yeah, I... Emma, I'm too busy arguing more. I want to get out of the tutorial now. How do I get out of the tutorial, guys? You forgot to mention the help menu. The button shows up when you right-click the help page list or the hotkeys of the game. Oh! Oh! Cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut. Wow. Great, guy. Would you like for no? Yeah, really. I'm fine. I think that covers everything. Now hurry up and start the game. See you soon. Wow. Hello. Bang. The glass jar I was holding explodes, sending smoke and bits of glass everywhere. Well, that didn't go the way I wanted it to at all. 
my mentor ain't happy about this either. I'm probably in for a lecture. But what did he really expect? I'm new at this. New at what? Exactly. When I came to San Francisco with my family, I never thought I'd end up becoming a, mission, a magician in training. It was maybe only number eight on my list of job choices. Actually, I'm not really sure what I expected. At least there hasn't been a dull moment since I got here. This all started a little over a week ago. It wasn't long after getting here that I decided it was time for me to leave the nest. Don't get me wrong, I love my family, always will, but I don't want to spend the rest of my life working laundry. Besides, I never came out and said it, but I think my parents are both disappointed that I still haven't middle aisled it. Got married. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that. I got plenty of offers, sure, but I wasn't about to get married to the first smuck who asked. And marrying one of them would have meant being a railroad wife or a laundry wife. Nah, I've got my sights set higher. I don't need a man to make things happen for me. Or so I thought, but there wasn't exactly a lot of jobs with Chinese Jane. Though even if I was a boy, I don't think I'd have had much luck. I guess there's a reason so many people so many Chinese people work in laundry. Just as I was starting to feel like I'd done a real dumb thing, leaving my family, I noticed some things in the air I, I had never saw before. There were words floating around me, shimmering and sparkling, words that looked like they were made of smoke. At least I think they were words. I can't read, never learned how. Anyhow, I got curious. They formed a trail and seeing as I had nothing else to do and nowhere to be, I followed where they led. Cool. Turns out at the end of the smoke trail was what looked like a candy shop. Huh. I wondered who here had made the smoke float in the air and shine like that. But mostly, seeing all that candy I couldn't eat just reminded me I was dangerously low on money. I'd bet whoever owned the place wasn't looking to hire someone like me to help out either. I turned away, but a soft voice called to me before I could go. Wait, are you here to inquire about the job? The word job was music to my ears. I turned around so fast I almost fell over. In front of me was this real tall dame. I ain't never seen a woman that tall before. She was dressed to the lines and looked like she had real heavy sugar. I bet she's the one who owns this place. I nodded but suspicious. Look, I'm not going to click on every single word to find out what it means because some of them I think I'm going to recognise. And if I do that, if I do click on every single word, I think we'll be here all day. I'm Marie. What's your name? My name? Huh. I had to think about that for a second. I refuse to go by my real name, so I'll tell her it's. Please type in a name for the heroine and press enter. If this is left blank, a name will let be left will be randomised for you. Fine. Yes. It's Bambi. Certainly it's an adorable name. You're here for that job, right? The way she said that was kind of shady, but I had nothing to lose. Yep. Copacetic. Come in, come in. She took me inside the place. Candy lined the walls. It looked legit, but too perfect somehow. Started putting the pieces together. So, a candy shop, huh? 
pretty good cover, isn't it? Yep, I knew there was something else going on here. She led me into a back room and pushed a button that made the wall open up. We went down some stairs and... Sure enough, there was a speakeasy at the bottom of them. Angry looking boy. Who's this? Plain Jane? Yeah, I'm a girl and you'll want to talk and actually a cat yourself. What was that, you bear cat? Now, now, take it easy, Emmy. Bozo with no manners. Hmm. This is Bambi. She's here about the job opening. Nice to meet you, Bambi. I'm Vivian. Oh, but you can just call me Vivi for sure. I nodded. This sourpuss here is Elmolo. Don't pay him no mind. He's all bark and no bite. Okay. Got it. Says you. Says everyone. Ah, beat it. Elmo, Elmo gives me a once I don't know, even know if I'm saying his name right. Uh, you got any experience bartending? Don't exactly look like the type. Why? Because I'm Chinese. He waved his hand at that. After I thought about it, I figured this place don't care much about person's colour. Who ever heard of a dame mixing drinks? Couldn't argue with that, not like I had any experience. <laughs> oh god. Click the wrong button. Uh, I'm a quick study. Wonderful, we've got another bird here who can mix drinks well enough, but he's pretty tied up with other duties. Bird's usually female, right? We want someone who will take his place so we can focus on music. Think you can do it? Marie and I would love to have another girl here. I am in a position to be picky about work. If you'll have me, you're on. Copacetic, where are you staying? Is it close to here? Uh, well, I'll level with you, Marie. I left my parents' place, so I ain't got a place to stay right now. Is that going to be a problem? No worries, sweetheart. We've got an extra room. This all seemed too good to be true. Where was the catch? That's what I was just thinking. How much is pay? Hmm, how does a saw buck a week sound? $10 bill. Hmm, okay. A girl like me wasn't going to complain about that. It was way more than I would have made staying with my parents. Copacetic. <laughs> she beamed when I said that. Like I said, I'm a quick study. All I'm doing is bartending, mixing drinks. Helping at the candy store upstairs, you'd just be watching the place, really. It's easy. You'll do great. Alright, I've got no complaints. I'm in. Wonderful. I still don't think this is a great idea, Marie. Oh, suck a lemon. We don't exactly get got people lining up, you know. Give it up already. MLO grumbled something in Spanish. I'm no Spanish expert, but I don't think it was something nice. Now I've got some business to take care of. You should rest before tonight. The blind griffin opens at six o'clock on the dot. Be there and look sharp. Vivi, do you think you could show her to the extra bed we've got? You've got it, Marie. Let's go. Say, ain't you got any luggage or anything? 
Nah, just the clothes on my back. Well, that means less to carry, I guess. This way. Have a nice nap, bear cat. Will do. He didn't seem to like that ants much, but I ignored him after that and walked out. Cool. Oh, Vivi and I went down another set of stairs and into a room on the left side of a hallway. It's a library. Well, a research room. Research? Never heard the word before. Oh, uh, research is when you try to learn more about something that you don't know enough about. You can read about it or do experiments or ask people, that sort of thing. I nodded. Vivi gestured for me to go ahead. I looked around. Books everywhere. What do bootleggers have to do all this research for, I wondered. Stuck in the corner with some more shelves was a bed. Looks a little cramped, but I don't take up much room anyhow. Wasn't exactly what I was thinking of when Marie said there was an extra room, but a place to sleep, a place to sleep. True, true, true. The speakeasy is open till late, so you should sleep now while you can. I nodded. Thanks, Vivi. Hey, no problem. Us girls have got to stick together, you know. Let me know if you need anything. Got it. Sleep tight. She left and after taking off my jacket, I jumped into bed. I had been losing hope of landing a job, but maybe this would all turn out all right. That's what I was thinking until I dozed off. A couple of hours later, Vivi woke me up and we went back up to the speakeasy. It looked really nice all lit up like that. Glad you could make it, Bambi. Can't be late on my first day of the job, can I? There was still a good hour before the, before the place opened for business. You look more like a dame with your hair down. Don't judge a woman by how womanly you think she looks, Elmolo. I'll be angry with you. Sorry, Maria. You know I didn't mean it like that. I know you didn't, but still, be nice. Really, I'm sorry. I had to take that in for a second. Mean, mean it like what? Staring at the lines of Maria's face, though, I suddenly understood. You're... I'm a woman. I was just born in the wrong kind of body, that's all. Hey, I'm not going to judge that, though I don't see why anyone would really want to be a woman. Are you kidding? You girls have it way easier than us guys do. Women don't have to go off to war. You ain't got to war either, tough, tough guy. Dry up, Viv. Just then I heard the sound of arguing coming from the stairs. Oh. Sounds like the men are back. And what am I? Just a boy, Emmy. Hmm. In what? A pair of regular shelks, a big stiff and a stiff looking bird wearing a cape. Pardon? Does he know how silly that cape looks? We introduce you to the guys. Who's the dame, Marie? This is Bambi. She's our new bartender. Is that so? Good to meet you. I'm Giovanni. If you have any questions, just ask me anytime. I nodded. A few seconds later I noticed an outstretched hand so I shook it in a hurry. Nice to meet you. Way too serious. Uh, Alex, say something to the girl, will you? Good evening, I'm Alexia. You had a real thick accent. Well, almost everyone here had some kind of accent, but his 
thick like butter. I nodded. Sorry, doll. He's what you call the slow to warm up type. Hmm. The gang's all together. Isn't this the berries? I think that's like bee's knees, isn't it? The best? Yeah. I had to wonder what all everyone did what all everyone did around here. Marie clearly owned the joint. Alexa and Giovanni probably muscle. But Elmolo and Vivi, hmm. Do you? Show Bambi the ropes, will you? You got it. She is the one I was telling you about before. The musician. Right. He'll take good care of you. Try and do what he says, alright? I nodded and went behind the counter with Giovanni. He took off his coat and hat and stowed them away. You ever mix drinks before? Well, if I'm leveling with you, no. But I learn really quick. I believe you. There's no problem. Try this one on for size. He handed me a glass and a metal cup thing. This here's a shaker. You um, shake things with it. Copacetic. Pulled out another glass and shake for some himself. He poured some alcohol and ice and started shaking. These are the basics of mixing. It's all the same technique. You just gotta learn what goes with what to make what else. Think you can do it? Sure. Over the next half hour or so, we worked out some cocktails. It was a lot to remember. But I really wanted a job. I did my best to keep up. You weren't kidding about being a fast learner. Good job, kid. A few more nights and you might just be able to take over for me. By now all the others are gathered around the bar. See, Emmy? She's doing just fine. Yeah, yeah. Let's see how she holds up in a week. Anyone can do good the first day. By the way, I didn't get a chance to ask you before, but how did you find out about this job anyway? This doesn't exactly seem like your racket. I didn't see any reasons to lie about it. I shrugged. I didn't hear about it. Not exactly. I followed the signs. It was just my luck your cats were hiring. Sorry I didn't mention that before. Marie and Giovanni looked at each other for a sec before looking back at me. Signs? You know, those glowing smoke things in the air, they made a trail that led right to this joint. A silence hung in the air for a while. You are a magician! Oh, great. Alexia was the first to speak up, strangely enough, but his words made no sense to me. A what? A magician. It means you can use magic, Bambi. Baloney. I ain't no magician. You see a wand or witch's hat on me? But only magicians can see those signs. Those are a secret message for others of our kind. There should be signs like that in a lot of cities, especially the big ones like San Francisco. Haven't you seen them before? Nope. But I ain't exactly been here long. Where did you live before? Sacramento. I'm sure there's covens there too. You never saw signs like these in Sacramento. I already told you I didn't. Think I'd remember if I did. Calm down, Bearcat. Don't tell me what to do, Buster. Why you... Look, I don't know from nothing about magic or magicians. This is the first I heard of any of this. Well, it's not totally unheard of, this situation. Perhaps you were just in a part of Sacramento where the coven couldn't reach. Okay. 
Okay. It is rare, but it does happen. Have you ever noticed anything strange happen around you? Times when you wished for something to happen and they just happened like that. <sighs> Thought back, now that they were mentioning it, I could think of plenty of examples. Times when I wished it would stop raining and it did. Times when I was dealing with some buddly and suddenly when they touched me they said it burned like fire. Things I thought were just coincidences. I'm a magician? Absolutely! Join the club. You're all magicians. Got it in one. Hmm. This is going to be a little bit of a problem. How so? Well, now you've got to take the exam. Exam? What's that? It's a test. See, we magicians have this thing called the Grand Council, a bunch of old fogies who make decisions about the way things are run. Every magician has to be approved by the council. Usually, they find you at a young age and train you to take this exam. If you fail, you get your magic taken away and your memory wiped. I lose my memory if I don't pass. Dead men tell no tales, but an amnesiac don't neither. Since we found out that you've got the magic potential, it's our duty to report you to the council. One of us will be your mentor, we'll train you, and then you'll take a magic exam administered by council representatives. Will she be able to handle both that and being a bartender at the same time? They all turned to me, their eyes were questioning, expecting. I didn't know if I really wanted to be a magician right then, but losing my memory of this place would be a problem. Sure, of course I will. I can do it. Yeah, okay. Copacetic. Our comment's going to be even numbered at last. If she passes, that is. You gotta be such a wet blanket, Emmy. <laughs> I'll dry up, Viv. I had a wet blanket, just a realist. That's not the word I'd use. I don't care. Alright, alright, enough from you two. Now, Bambi, I know this has to be a lot to take in, and why don't you turn in for the night? But what about the job? Ain't this place about to open? We did fine without you up till now. We can survive one more night. Marie is right. Get some rest. We can talk more in the morning. Well, if you put it that way, then all right. I'll take you up on that. Can you find your way to a room by yourself? Yeah, I think I've got the hang of it. Just one stairway down. All right. Good night. night. Okay. Well, mixed feelings, I went down the stairs to my new room. Of course, I tossed and turned the whole night, but what do you expect? It's not every day you're told you're a magician. After I woke up the next morning, I went upstairs to the speakeasy. Boys were nowhere to be seen, but Vivian Marie were sitting at the bar talking. Good morning, Bambi. Did you sleep well? I did all right, thanks. You got bags under your eyes. You found me out, did you? Ah, it's normal to be nervous. I know I was before I took my exam. So I was wondering about this last night, but all of you are magicians, right? I asked yesterday, but it hadn't really sunk in. You got it. All five of us. Soon to be six. Did you all get here the same way I did? 
Well, sort of. Gio and I were trained by the same mentor. After I came to own this building, I made it the headquarters for our coven. My mentors left town, see, so someone had to fill in the gap. Alexio had trained and took his exam in Russia before he came to America. I did the same in New York. Emmy's really the only one who found this place the same way you did. Giovanni mentored him. That was a ways back. So with five of you here, who's going to be my mentor? Hmm, well I'd love to teach you, but I don't think I'm far enough along yet. I take, I take singing a lot more seriously than magic, so I'm not much of an expert. What about you, Marie? I'm afraid I'm not the teaching sort. The type of magic I specialise in can't really be taught. Couldn't you just teach outside of your specialisation? Specialisation? Oh, silly me, going on and on when you're still a newbie. There's five basic types of magic. Fire, water, earth, air and light. Or dark. All magicians can use any of them, but usually we have one type we like best. That's our specialisation. Mine's air, you see. Sang a few bars and I felt the room heat up. I could change the chemicals in the air or make the air hotter or colder, that sort of thing. By singing? Oh, I don't hate to sing, I just like it, but I still have lots to work on. What's your specialisation, Marie? She just laughed softly instead of answering. Well, I wonder what it is. Don't be such a tease, Marie. A girl's entitled to her secrets, isn't she? That's true. Vivi shook her head. Anyhow, you've got to choose a mentor out of the guys. And they're fine with that? We all talked about it last night after you went to bed. Any one of them will be happy to take you on. Giovanni's probably the best choice. He's nice, smart, and he's the best magician out of all of us. The real cat's pyjamas. He's very laid back, though. You might have to push him if you want to learn more. Alexia, on the other hand, is a very hard-working man. He studied magic very closely and understands it on a real technical level. But he's pretty serious too, so watch out. Emmy, well, you know him, a real firecracker. He talks big, but he's got a big heart too. Emelo is quite talented if you get along with him. I'm sure he'd be a good mentor. The men all had their good and bad points for sure. It wasn't going to be an easy choice. How long do I have before the exam? I got a message from the council this morning. They work fast. The exam's going to be on February 5th, so you've got a few months. That seems like a real short time to be learning something like this. You don't have to be a master magician by then, you just have to show them that you know what you're doing and won't make a mess of things. Magi the council don't want magicians doing e anything evil, magic should be used for good. Yeah, I guess I can, I can understand that. I can hear a low chattering sound from nearby. Ooh, it sounds like they're back. They had to pick up the new shipment of booze from the harbour. Well, there's no time like the present. Who's going to be your mentor? After weighing all my options, I decided to go with... Let's go middle of the road. Really? I mean, Emmy's like a brother to me, but are you sure? I shrugged. Out of the three, he seemed the closest in age to me. Sure, he might be hot-edited, but I was confident I could take him. Before he could say anything, MLO walked over. What are you girls doing up so early? Just some girls talk, MLO. She picked you as her mentor. Qui? I mean, what? He turned to look at me. He had surprise written all over his face. 
I guess I couldn't blame him. We didn't exactly get off on the best foot. You did? Is that bad? He blinked a couple of times. His mouth flapped open and closed like a fish gasping for air. Then he regained his confidence. I mean, of course you picked me. I'm the cat's meow. I looked at Vivi, who shot me a sorry smile. Right. Better work hard to keep up with me. I don't want to deal with idiots with nothing going on upstairs. I'll do my best. He grinning like a little kid. He snapped his fingers, and then a small flame appeared in the palm of his hand. How's that? Pretty nifty, huh? I guess. What do you mean, I guess? I can do the same thing with a match. Is that all magic is? MLO rolled his eyes. This is why I hate palookas. What the heck? Social outsider loser also used mostly my MLO to refer to non magicians or those who aren't well versed in the world of magic. Okay. We were all pal palookas once, Emmy. Her, dry up! I ain't got any interest in teaching someone who doesn't want to learn. Emma Before anyone could get another word in edgeways though, he stumped off, he even kicked the wall as he left. I started thinking I'd made a mistake picking him after all. Was it something I said? He's a little rough around the edges, that's all, but he's a good kid. Give him time and he'll come round. Tempting as it was, I couldn't just go change your mentors. I'd made my decision, and I was going to have to stick with it. Here's hoping. Okay. I'm actually going to leave it here for now. Um, if I can save. Because, uh, we've been playing for 40 minutes. Um, we're only just getting some, some info, so... Basically, from what she's walked into the middle of something that she doesn't quite understand. Um, and she's about to learn uh, how to be a magician. So we will carry on with this at a later date. And for now, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in another video. Thank you.